If you stroll through the heart of Barcelona and find yourself at the intersection of Carrer de Mallorca and Carrer de la Marina, you'll encounter a breathtaking sight, the majestic, yet unfinished, Sagrada Familia. Do you know when its construction began? Astonishingly, it started in 1882 and remains incomplete. This isn't just any church. It's an architectural masterpiece with 18 spires, the tallest destined to reach 172.5 meters, piercing the sky. Conceived by the visionary Antoni Gaudi, the Sagrada Familia defies traditional architecture. But why has this monumental project taken over 140 years to build? And what historical challenges have shaped its epic journey? Our story begins in the late 19th century with a man named Josep Maria Bocabella, a humble book merchant with a big dream. Inspired by a trip to Italy, Bocabella envisioned a grand basilica that would stand as a beacon of faith. In 1882, the first stone was laid, marking the beginning of an extraordinary journey. Initially, the project was led by architect Francisco de Paula del Villar. His plans were impressive, but traditional, reflecting the Gothic revival style popular at the time. However, due to disagreements and budget issues, Del Villar stepped down, opening the door for a young and ambitious architect named Antoni Gaudi. Gaudi was only 31 years old when he took over in 1883, but he had a vision that would change everything. He didn't just see a church, he envisioned a living, breathing monument that would merge nature, faith, and art. His designs were groundbreaking, full of organic shapes and intricate details inspired by the natural world. Imagine a building where every stone and curve tells a story, where spires reach towards the heavens, and facades are adorned with scenes from the life of Christ. Gaudi's innovative approach was nothing short of revolutionary, but bringing his vision to life was no easy feat. So why has it taken so long? The challenges began with the tragic death of Antoni Gaudi in 1926. At the time of his death, the basilica was only between 15 and 25% complete. This sudden loss left the project without its visionary leader, causing significant delays. Gaudi's disciplines took over, but their work was soon disrupted by the Spanish Civil War in 1936. During the war, many parts of the unfinished basilica, as well as Gaudi's models and workshop, were destroyed. Work only resumed after the unrest ended in 1939, but the plans changed hands many times between 1939 and 1985. Throughout the years, the project faced numerous challenges, including a fire in 2011 started by an arsonist, which caused damage and forced the evacuation of tourists and construction workers. By 2019, parts of the basilica completed in the early 20th century had become so old that they needed renovation. Despite its grandeur, this masterpiece has not received any support from the government or official church sources. The project has solely relied on the generosity of those who have visited and donated towards its construction. The funds generated from ticket sales and private donations have been used to fund its construction. This has earned it the title of the Expiatory Temple. The annual costs of construction and maintenance are estimated to run up to 25 million euros a year which are paid for by the site's 3 million annual visitors as well as private donors. The current total estimated building costs stand at 374 million euros. The project has also been under construction for more than a century without a building permit, which led to a historic agreement in 2018 for the church to pay 41 million euros to city authorities over 10 years. As part of the construction process, the church also had to pay for a building permit which cost 4.6 million euros, making it the most expensive permit in modern Barcelona. But what makes this basilica so special and complex? Gaudi's design was a Latin cross plan with five naves, a central nave flanked by two aisles on each side, 
a transept with three aisles, and an apse with seven chapels. But it was the verticality of the building that truly set it apart. He planned for 18 spires, each with a specific significance, 12 for the Apostles, 4 for the Evangelists, 1 for the Virgin Mary, and the tallest for Jesus Christ. The tallest spire, dedicated to Jesus, will reach a height of 172.5 meters, making it the tallest church building in the world upon completion. Gaudi's design wasn't just about height and grandeur, it was about creating a structure that felt organic and alive, much like the natural world he so admired. He used hyperboloids, paraboloids, helicoids, and conoids. Geometric shapes found in nature to create the basilica's complex and dynamic forms. This approach not only made the structure visually stunning, but also incredibly strong and stable. The columns inside the church, for instance, branch out like trees to support the roof, creating a forest-like canopy that allows light to filter through in a way that mimics natural light. One of the most striking features of the Sagrada Familia is its facade. Each of the three main facades, the Nativity, the Passion, and the Glory, tells a different part of Christ's life. Inside the Basilica, Gaudi's love for light and color comes to life. He designed large stained glass windows to bathe the interior in vibrant hues, creating an ever-changing palette as the sun moves across the sky. But Gaudi's genius wasn't just in his artistic vision. His engineering solutions were ahead of their time. For instance, he used inclined columns and ruled surfaces to create a self-supporting structure. This innovative approach meant that the weight of the building was distributed in such a way that it could support itself without the need for external buttresses, which were common in Gothic architecture. The use of different types of stone is another fascinating aspect. Originally, Gaudi used Monjuic stone from the nearby Monjuic Hill, but as the quarries closed, builders had to source materials from all over the world. Stones from Scotland, England, France, and even as far as Iran and Brazil have been used to maintain the aesthetic and structural integrity of the basilica. Each stone is carefully chosen to match the color, texture, and durability of the original materials, ensuring a seamless appearance. In terms of structural elements, the basilica's columns are a marvel in themselves. Gaudi designed them with a slight tilt to better support the weight of the roof, mimicking the way trees naturally grow towards the light. The biomimicry not only provides structural strength, but also creates a dynamic and naturalistic interior space. The central columns, which will eventually support the spire of Jesus Christ, are particularly massive, designed to bear immense weight and reach unprecedented heights. The ongoing work on the glory facade is perhaps the most ambitious part of the project. This facade will be the largest and most elaborate, symbolizing the road to heaven. Its design includes a grand staircase that will lead up to the main entrance, surrounded by a forest of columns and statues representing the seven deadly sins and seven heavenly virtues. In recent decades, the construction of the Sagrada Familia has been significantly accelerated by modern technology. Advances in computer-aided design CAD, and 3D printing have transformed how the basilica is being built. These technologies allow architects to create detailed digital models of the complex structures that Gaudi envisioned. These digital models make it easier to plan and visualize every aspect of the construction process, ensuring that everything is accurate and efficient. 3D printing, in particular, has been a game-changer. It allows the creation of precise prototypes and molds, speeding up the construction of intricate details and components that would have taken much longer to craft by hand. Another technological breakthrough is the use of Industry 4.0 systems. These advanced systems use sensors on each building piece to monitor and control the construction process automatically. The sensors check the temperature, hardness, and tension of the steel rods that hold the panels together, ensuring that every piece is assembled correctly. 
This automation improves both the efficiency and accuracy of the construction. Virtual reality, VR, is also being used to enhance the construction process. Architects can send the 3D models to VR glasses, creating a virtual view of the building. This allows them to check the volume, geometry, texture, or light of specific elements in real time. They can make quick and safe decisions based on these virtual inspections, speeding up the overall construction. As we move closer to the anticipated completion date, scheduled around 2026 to coincide with the centenary of Gaudi's death, the Sagrada Familia continues to evolve. Each day, new technologies and techniques bring us closer to realizing Gaudi's vision. What do you think the completion of the Sagrada Familia will mean for the architectural world and Barcelona? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications.